Hello and uh, welcome to the Sierra Alpha 6 Hotel Alpha Mike channel. This is my first video and it's going to be about modifying my Kenwood TS570D transceiver into a, a pan adapter enabled one using this dongle I picked up on eBay for nothing. So let's get started. good place to tap the IX1 signal which is a, it's 73.05 megahertz or something the best place I've found with a little help from my friends is this port right here called CN3 these two pins right there use a pointing device here you see that 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 so I'm going to connect the I cut the cord on my dongle's antenna like that and I'm going to connect the the outer lining uh, stuff to the which is that pin the second one the the one on the right hand side because that's the ground and the middle, the center point to the left one. And I'm gonna have to sacrifice a plug from my from an old computer to like the power button cord or the power LED cord from the chassis, and see if I can just hook that on this, so I can plug and play the dongle into the radio. I found this beautiful black and white cable with a, a plug that looks like it would fit nicely so let's see if it does it should be the same orientation I guess as the the male connector here so we'll see yeah well it's not perfect no, it's gonna fit nicely that's gonna do just fine and since I don't have a an un crimped version of this plug I'm gonna have to just go onto the cables and use the soldering iron When the I'd like to be able to get access to the SMA plug so that I can uh, actually plug in the dongle into it. So I was thinking one of these holes would have been nice to feed the cable through before I soldered the plug onto the to the end. So uh, now I'm thinking I'll just hack off one of these corners in here and, and see if I can feed the cable through so I don't have to drill a hole in the this much thicker metal here or here for that matter all right let's see what I can what I can come up with
So I decided to leave to the cable since it's going to be on the outside of the radio and it's connected to that point as you remember. So my plan is to get this zip tie around that screw head there, this little thing. So I'm going to unscrew this piece of plate and um, pre-zip the zip tie just a bit like that and just put it around there and then screw it back on, leave the cable through, tighten the zip tie and then I'm done. So that's up next. So as you can see, I've threaded the cable through the zip tie twice for because of reasons, you know. I'm trying to tighten the zip tie without disturbing this little cable here. Seems to be working just fine so far. Let's see. Actually, that this will do a very nice job. It's already a nice friction to it, so it's going to pull on the on this plate and the screw head instead of the actual cable. So that will do just fine. All right. This is just the rest of the screws for the. Little cover plate here. Let's see if I can get them. In. Oh, probably tighten this too too tight. You shouldn't tighten all the. You shouldn't tighten one one screw first. You should make sure to put at least a couple of them in into their holes before. Or you can tighten it too crooked. It won't. won't be easy, just like when you change the tires in a car. Just do it one at a time. Take your time and just do everything right. Let's put them all in. Especially these screws I've found because it seems they don't really fit their grooves properly. Or it's designed like that just to get the extra friction for some reason. Now I can tighten these down properly. Not too hard, of course, because it's a circuit board. You don't want to break your board. There we go. Now the cover in the right direction, with the thing in the right direction. And then the cord through the little hole. Make sure the cable doesn't go between the screw hole and the, and the place. There we go. So then it's just the cover screws. This screw is, is offset a tiny bit. I think I'm going to just press down on the case. To, I think the screw is more valuable to me than the cable is at this point. Because a compressed cable is still a good cable if it's not too compressed. There we go, installation done. 
Now we have a nice SMA cable to just plug into any dongle, really. So I can get a nicer dongle and just plug in a nicer, I guess. Well, I guess the really expensive dongles might, or dongle, I mean, um, expensive SDR hardware might be uh, using different SMA plugs. So this might be a temporary installation anyway. All right, let's just plug this into my computer. My computer is running Debian ham radio. So it's all, got all the nice, nice programs already installed. Let's plug the dongle into the radio. Didn't seem to break anything. That's nice. Um, then plug the dongle into my computer. Good. All right. Let's take a look at the computer. Right. So this computer is running um, Debian ham radio, which is in a an early development stage. I would recommend it anyway now because it's got everything pre-installed for ham radio, uh, including um, the thing that we're gonna try this out on. Let's see what I if I can remember what it's called. G GQRX is the name of the game. So let's see what we can see. Here we have a nice floor of noise. Alright, so now in, in uh, GQRX here we can see that the I'm tuned to that frequency right there, which is empty. And if I tune up this line here into range, I get this. AM radio station. It's uh, not quite on the line. I'm not going to bother with tuning GQRX because I'm running I'm gonna run HD SDR later using wine that's the plan anyway so that's all for this modification um, now you know which pin to put your dongle into okay good luck